Welcome to another video on higher order derivatives. I would recommend watching the first video I made on higher order derivatives because it does go into much more detail about the uses of higher order derivatives. This video just provides a couple extra examples. This video just provides some extra examples of finding higher order derivatives of trigonometric functions. Let's first review the different notation that we can use when we're talking about the first, second, third, fourth, and nth derivatives. And these are referred to as higher order derivatives. Let's go ahead and look at a couple examples. Here we have f of x equals sine x, and we want to find the first, second, third, and fourth derivatives of this function. Well, the first derivative would be cosine x, and the second derivative would be the derivative of the first derivative, the derivative of cosine x is equal to negative sine x. Well, the third derivative would be the derivative of the second derivative. The derivative of negative sine x would be negative cosine x. And then lastly, the fourth derivative, since the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, and we have a negative here, we're going to have a negative negative sine x, which is equal to sine x. What we'll notice here is that the fourth derivative and the original function are the same. And let's just take a look at one more example. Here we want to find the first and second derivative of f of x equals secant x. Well, the first derivative is review. The derivative of secant x is equal to secant x tangent x. Now our second derivative is going to take a little more work because this is actually a product. So we're going to have to use the product rule where this is our first function f and this is our second function g. So let's go ahead and write out the product rule. The second derivative is equal to the first function f times the derivative of the second function g plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. Okay, let's go ahead and find these derivatives now and then see if we can simplify this. Derivative of tangent x is equal to secant squared x. And the derivative of secant x is equal to secant x tangent x. Now you'll notice these two products do have a common factor of secant x. Let's go ahead and factor that out. We'd be left with the quantity secant squared x plus tangent squared x. Now one of the challenges of finding derivatives of trigonometric functions is making the form match what you may find in the back of the book or in your online homework. One thing that I see here they might try to do is write this in terms of one trig function. Remember that tangent squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. So what we could do is replace tangent squared x with secant squared x minus 1. And what that would do is have the second derivative all in terms of secant and a constant. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's replace tangent squared x with secant squared x minus 1. And now you'll notice we do have two common factors here inside the parentheses. So let's go ahead and simplify this one more time. So we'd have 2 secant squared x minus 1 inside the parentheses. So again, this video just provided a couple extra examples of higher order derivatives dealing with trigonometric functions. I hope you found the examples helpful.